Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Keep Running with BK and in today's video I'm very excited to share with you maybe the closest thing to the most anticipated video this channel has ever done uh, which is MAF one year later and if you're not familiar with what that is I have been following the MAFETONE or MAF training method for a year and MAF is obviously a topic of interest to those who find this channel or who have subscribed to this channel based on the number of views and comments on the videos that I've produced and so today I'm very excited to share with you my thoughts after one year following the training method. Uh, if that is something of interest to you uh, I'll be right back right after this so stay tuned. So again, I want to thank you for uh, joining me uh, on this particular video. And if you're new to my channel, Keep Running with BK is really all about me sharing insights from my own running and uh, sharing some training tips that I've learned over the years, uh, ultimately with the goal of helping you to stay motivated, to help you to continue to learn and improve as a runner uh, with the ultimate goal that I personally have that I, I, I hope to encourage you to have as well, and that is to be able to keep running for a very long time. And one of the things that has really helped me uh, of late is the Maffetone training method, or affectionately referred to as MAF uh, by many. So some of you may have been following uh, my MAF journey since I started, or been following the channel since I started earlier this year, and some of you, this may be the first time that uh, you're coming across one of my videos. So just real quickly, some background. Uh, I started running uh, in middle school in cross country and I've been running year round in some shape or fashion ever since. And uh, so I was running for 37 years before I stumbled upon the math training method last summer. And I have been following that approach for a year and I wanted to take this time to really look back, reflect on the past year, and just share some of my conclusions or some of my thoughts uh, based on one year of training with you so that if you are checking out this method like I did uh, a year ago watching YouTube videos and trying to understand a little bit more about it, what can I expect, what have people experienced with it, hopefully you'll find some uh, value in today's uh, uh, video. Uh, some of you may be following my journey or even uh, following the math training method yourself and so you are interested in this topic and following along and uh, I, I welcome you to the channel as well. Uh, if at any time during this video uh, you have questions feel free to share those down in the comments and if there's anything that I share that is of value to you uh, I would appreciate a like along the way uh, just to help support the channel, uh, help create awareness of the channel and as always, I'm only looking for a like from you if you found any value in it. I'm not looking for any superficial uh, pumping up of the channel or clickbait or anything like that. I stumbled upon MAF during the pandemic while working at home. And uh, during that time, I was doing a lot of heads down work and really listening to a lot of YouTube on a lot of different topics of interest to me. One of which is running, something I've been doing for a very long time. And quite honestly, the the past decade had been very uh, inconsistent. Um, at times I was motivated, at other times I was struggling. Uh, there were times where uh, the inconsistency was due to lack of motivation or flat out I was injured again. Uh, when you've been running going on almost four decades, uh, that's a lot of wear and tear on the body. And one of the things that I've shared in some of my videos is most of my training uh, was often running too hard too often. I never really got the idea of what uh, uh, smart training was with respect to running easy and on easy days. Um, I attempted easy days, but oftentimes my easy days weren't easy enough. And therefore I hit a ceiling. I was at best being able to, to maintain 30 to 35 miles a week. Anytime I tried to push beyond that, uh, typically when I was preparing for a marathon, I would experience uh, an injury. 
and as I've gotten older I would experience injuries even more frequently and therefore the consistency as well as the training volume was significantly lower than I would like or I'm used to and therefore learning really struggled. So one of the things that I really liked when I stumbled upon math was the idea of really truly slowing down and learning how to develop my aerobic capacity or that aerobic base and quite honestly I really needed a reset to stay motivated and so I was like okay let's try this. So I committed uh, to at least three months of following the method to see what happens which involved calculating my maximum aerobic uh, function heart rate uh, with which to train at and wearing a heart rate monitor to stay within that training uh, range which which I did and ultimately I went on to train purely math for seven months then I introduced a three-month 80-20 training block where 80% of my training was at a math effort uh, to ensure that I kept it easy and I was getting the full recoveries uh, with 20% of my training then uh, allowing for speed work, quality work, and harder efforts. And then I returned back to math um, over the past uh, couple of months, uh, which brings us to this point. Ultimately, I was able to run my first ever ultra marathon, something that I had trained for multiple times before, but uh, could never um, maintain the training volume to be able to do that. And math allowed me to do that. And now I'm training for Another one later this summer, early fall, um, just to um, give that another shot and see if I can't improve upon what I uh, accomplished in that first time experience. And I always wanted to see how, how MAP is going to continue to develop and see if it can't improve the ultra experience. So one of the key things for MAP for me was training at a low heart rate and ultimately really learning what running at an easy pace truly was and one of the things that that ultimately then allowed me to do was increase the frequency of my running so up to that point I would typically run three maybe four days a week typically four days a week if I was training for a race but that was all I knew I could handle uh, I knew I needed two or three uh, rest days a week uh, because again I was my easy days weren't easy so I didn't feel really recovered slowing down allowed me to up that to five days a week pretty consistently um, starting last June all the way through uh, the middle of May this year so basically the past 11 months I've consistently run five days a week and I'm at the point now where since middle of May I've been able to bump that up to where I'm now training six days a week and I'm able to increase my mileage which a year ago was about 25 to you know 30 miles a week um, here or there leading up to discovering math with math I would train from 25 to 35 miles a week really for the first six seven months um, and then I was able to consistently transition to 35 miles a week in the past month and a half I've been averaging 40 miles a week so math has now become a tool in my running toolbox that allows me to safely and slowly build my weekly mileage so that I have now have a a bigger base a bigger foundation with which to build upon when I want to develop speed for a race perhaps this fall. The other thing that I've been able to accomplish with MAF over the past year is I've run over 1500 miles in the past 12 months using the MAF training method. Over the past two and a half decades where I have tracked my running, if I was able to run between 1000 and 1200 miles for the year, I considered that to be a pretty solid training year. So I've already been able to go beyond that with 1500 miles for the past year and that includes five weeks in that time so just a little over a month of non-running so basically in 10 and a half 11 months of running over the past year I've been able to, to log 1500 miles which is great for me that's a lot for me and I'd like to slowly and gradually continue to build that as is the goal for all of us endurance athletes 
In addition to that, I've already logged 800 miles so far in 2021, which is the fastest start to any year that I have on record. So I continue to uh, uh, achieve uh, new milestones of my own personal training. And uh, I attribute the majority of that to MAF as it's allowed me to increase the frequency, increase the volume, recover quicker, stay mostly injury free during that time and continue to stay motivated uh, to get out and keep running. At this point, I wanna pause just briefly and ask a question uh, of you. As I'm sharing, here's some of the things that I've been trying to improve and work on in my own running, that is to stay um, injury free, to be able to increase my mileage and to build that aerobic base and ultimately to really reset my running so that I can continue to run for another decade or two I want to ask you what is it in your running or in your training that you're working on or that you're trying to improve? I'd love to hear what uh, other runners who are watching the channel uh, are working on in their own running or improving upon and uh, just really sharing in your journey as well. One of the other things that I've done over the past year with the MAF training is pretty consistently performed a monthly MAF test which is where I control as many of the environmental factors as I possibly can. For me, that is running in the mornings at the track and running for an hour and seeing how far I can run in that time frame at my maximum aerobic heart rate. And the idea here is as you're improving your aerobic function, you should be able to run further or longer at your MAF training heart rate. And that's how you can gauge whether or not MAF is working for you and if you are improving in your running. And over the past year, looking at those test results from my latest to my first one, I'm, I'm basically running about a minute faster per mile at that same target heart rate than I was a year ago, which basically translates to about a half a mile further in an hour's time than I was a year ago. So that is improvement. That shows that I'm continuing to develop my aerobic base. I'm developing those slow twitch muscle fibers that uh, I've learned are mostly underdeveloped for many runners because they are running too hard too often. And so I'm building that aerobic capacity um, that is so critical to me as an endurance athlete. And uh, I'm gonna continue to build on the MAF training over the years to come and continue to measure how that improvement goes through the monthly MAF test. Now that's still about a minute per mile slower than I historically trained um, for, for my runs. But the difference is, is now I'm no longer hitting that ceiling where when I get to that 30, 35 miles a week is when I start to break down. I'm now actually able to push that to the 40 mark and I'm looking uh, over the next couple of months to slowly and, and safely build my weekly volume to 45 miles a week without getting hurt. And as a result, I feel healthier. I feel uh, very positive about the direction that my running is going in as I uh, enter a new age group, as I'm getting ready to close out a my fourth decade in uh, over the next year or two. Um, and I've got my eyes set on another decade or two yet in front of me to keep running. One of the other things that I've evaluated uh, over the past year just to see the impact that MAF has had, I mentioned that I'm basically running a half mile further um, at the same target heart rate uh, within that hour. And you know, I introduced that 80-20 training block into the mix and I wanted to kind of see how much improvement can I attribute potentially to the 80-20 versus the MAF. And over the first seven months of MAF training, I actually improved about a quarter mile. Then over that three month training block of 80-20, I improved another quarter mile. Um, and then over the past month and a half, two months since I've transitioned back to 100% MAF, I basically have been staying even. And I look forward to seeing what, uh, you know, training at MAF over the summer is going to do to continue to improve that before probably switching to an 80-20 approach again later this fall. I mentioned MAF for me was exactly what I needed to reset. And I would suggest anyone who's looking to start running 
or who has been away from running for a long time and coming back to it, or someone who needs a reset like I did, or someone who wants an effective approach to help building your base fitness and your base training, um, that the principles learned through the MAF approach are a great fit for that. I think the biggest factor that I've noticed as well is for so long I kind of just accepted that my training capacity was really at that 30 to 35 mile range um, which really isn't a whole lot of mileage uh, as I have talked to people over the years uh, who are marathon trainers or marathon runners um, my weekly mileage of 30 to 35 miles a week is on the extreme low end for most people who have been running as long as I have doing those types of races. Uh, I've demonstrated that it's something that can be done, um, but as I get older, I can't maintain that. Um, for whatever reason, when I was younger, I was able to pull that off, but as I think about what I would like to continue to do as a runner, the types of races that I would like to continue to run or like the ultras to do those, there's no way that I can do that on 30, 35 miles a week, um, enjoy it, stay injury free, etc. I need to be able to build that volume to higher levels and uh, I have not been able to do that the old way I trained and math has been for me the answer of how I can do that. So again, I hope that uh, you have found value in this particular video as I share just some of my thoughts after training at the with the MAF training approach over the past year. It is something that I plan on continuing to do for the long term, following these principles. Um, I plan on probably adopting you know, a seasonal approach to when I'm doing 100% MAF and uh, when I'm gonna do something more like the 80-20 where I'm doing speed work to continue to develop that system and train for specific races. And uh, I really appreciated your comments, your support over the past uh, year with the math training, whether that was on Strava or sending me emails or following me on Twitter uh, or even following this channel over the past six months. I've really enjoyed sharing that journey with you and I look forward to uh, many, many more. So again, thanks. I hope that you all uh, get out there and enjoy your running. Stay safe, train smart, and keep running.